Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. We praise God this morning. We praise God this morning. I am Kay Johnson, and this is the Vibe Tribe Prayer Call. We are so glad to have you. This morning, we will be praying, 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 praying. And I pray that you will understand your sacrifice. And I'm going to continue to move with the Holy Spirit as the Spirit guides me to do. We pray that you're that you be willing as well. I am under the leadership of pastor and founder Joe Ann Johnson, Sr. of Miracle Revival Tabernacle Church of 45 years. And we give, well, I give honor to my leader and to this assignment. And so we're just going to start with just opening up a sound. You just need to give God a sound this morning. Um, God has been teaching me very quickly. I'm at this speed that <clears throat> only God understands <laughs> right now. Um, but this morning, I just want you to open up the sound. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to open up your mouth. Uh, we know that one of the steps to engage with the Spirit, to see Him at work, is to open up your mouth. Opening up your mouth is a principle. You have to speak because everything that we see, and when it comes to the natural world that was not created by man, we know that the Lord, God, creator of this entire universe, the heavens and the earth, he spoke. He didn't do. He spoke. So open up your mouth and give God. Give God a worship. Open up your mouth and say hallelujah. Oh, glory, thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah Jesus. Glory, oh, glory. Glory, glory. glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. 
We put hell on notice that Alabasi Kianda. Yes, Andoro Basi. We put hell on notice, Sakataya. Yet a little bundle suitu and a shetea. And the Basi. Jesus, 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 and the Baba de Basi Kianda. Oh, the Basi and the Basataya. Jesus. Yes, God. Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, na na ma sha and do ro Yes, Oh, yes. Mm. Yeah. Glory, glory, Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for providing. Deeper, Lord. Deeper, deeper, you yeah. yeah. should have. Yeah. Deeper, 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 deeper. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Hallelujah. 
are. You are who you say you are. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Father, we thank you. Glory, 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 glory. How many of you know that when you groan and when you moan, when you have this wordless expression, the Father, the Creator, our Maker, He still understands your groaning. And Father says this is not just a tradition. This is not just something that the old people do that you know in your church when they just go, mm, because there's just some things that we don't know how to express. But the Father knows, the Spirit knows. This is not just something that they do. This is scriptural. This is Bible. So I ask you, Father, now, to open up the revelation on this line. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. And we come to you now, Father, saying, forgive us. And you might hear me praying in the spirit and praying in my heavenly language. Forgive us, Jesus, forgive us, Jesus, forgive us, Jesus. Wash us, Lord Jesus. Wash us, Lord Jesus. Wash us, Lord Jesus. Wash us, Lord Jesus. Wash our hands, Lord. Wash our hands, Lord. Wash our hands, Lord. Wash our, hands, Lord. Wash our minds. Wash our minds, Lord Jesus. Wash our minds, Lord Jesus. Wash our eyes. Wash our eyes. Wash our hearts, Lord. Wash our hearts. Clean us, clean us, clean us. Purify us, Lord Jesus. Purify us, Lord Jesus. We lift up your name. You are the name above every name. There is none like you. Besides you, there is no other. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ah, uh, yes, God. Yes, God. Let me read this into your hearing. Um, everybody knows the scripture, but we're gonna go deeper and we're gonna pray this today. Everybody knows the scripture. This is a very popular scripture, Jeremiah, we're going to start at 29, Jeremiah 29, verse 10. I'm going to be reading from the ESD, um, and we're going to pray, and we're going to, we're going to dive into this word, but it says, for thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. But before that, let me go back even more, you guys. So this is Jeremiah sending a letter to the exiles uh, from Jerusalem to Babylon. These are the exiles who are in Babylon, but they are from Jerusalem. And Jeremiah is sending them a letter. He's sending them a letter. Um, to the priests, the prophets, the elders, all of them that are surviving, and all the people who Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile, okay? Um, the letter was sent by hand uh, from King Zedekiah, king, from Zedekiah, the king of Judah, sent to Babylon, who is to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, And so God writes, and I'm going to start at four. It says, thus says the Lord of hosts, 
usually when the Lord, when they, he, when he recognizes himself as the Lord of hosts, he's talking about being a, a, an army, the Lord of the army, king, angel armies, the God of Israel. So all the exiles whom I have sent into exile, so God sent them into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. He said, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat their produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there, and do not decrease. God is telling them, do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. On For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. So he tells them to seek the welfare of the city. Pray to the Lord on its behalf. He says in 8, For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Do not let your prophets and your diviners, who are among you, deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams that they dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, declares the Lord. Now we at 10. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are complete for Babylon, I will visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have. Everybody know this part right here. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and hope. Another version says plans to thoughts of peace and not to, of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Twelve, then you will call upon me and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Number 14, for I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into into exile. Because you have said the Lord has raised up prophets for us in Babylon, thus says the Lord concerning the king who sits on the throne of David and concerning all the people who dwell in the city, your kinsmen who do not go out, who did not go out with you into exile, this says the Lord, behold, I am sending on them sword, famine, and pestilence, and I will make them like vile figs that are so rotten they cannot be eaten. I, pers- I will pursue them with sword, famine, and pestilence, and make and will make them a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth to be, to be a curse, a terror, a hissing, and a reproach among all the nations where I have driven them. Because they did not pay attention to my words, declares the Lord, that I persistently sent to you but my, by my servants, the prophets. But you would not listen, declares the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, all you exiles whom I sent away from Jerusalem to Babylon. So he goes on and says some more things. But we're going to go back to 10.9. Mm-mm. No, we're going to go back to mm-hmm. We're going to go back to I like where it says five here. So y'all We have to understand God gives us instruction right? Here's instruction In verse five he says Build houses and live in them Plant gardens and eat their produce He tells them to take wives And have sons and daughters Take wives for your sons. So he's telling the fathers, get you a wife. Have some children. Then he's saying, fathers, when you have your children, get your children married. Have sons and daughters and marry them. And multiply. There. Do not decrease. We thank you, Father. And then he says, but, but seek. This is more instruction. Here's the word of the Lord. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the the Lord on his behalf. First of all, let's go to see what exile means if we don't really understand it. Because some of us may not have ever felt like we've been in exile, maybe not understand it. And y'all know I like to, um, I'm not really teaching today, y'all. I'm really just uh, bringing understanding to what we're going to pray, okay? So, um, just stay with me. I'm not, I'm not really going to teach today. But it's gonna you're gonna get understanding. Uh, so let me see. Uh it says to be uncovered, to win to be taken into exile. They have a diff, they have a lot of different meanings here. They have to uncover, to remove, to go into exile, depart, 
to uncover oneself, to discover or show oneself, to reveal himself of God, to be disclosed, to be discovered, to be revealed, to be removed, nakedness, um, make known, show, reveal. Uh, yes. Um, the part, disclose, discover, exile, be gone, open, publish, remove, shamelessly, shoo, surely, tell, uncover. Okay, so we got that, right? Everybody got that? Go back. Jeremiah. So he's saying, be, but seek, going back to seven, be, but seek the welfare of the city where I've sent you. Let me look at welfare, too. Let me, let me go back to welfare, because we don't, the only time we hear welfare is when she on welfare or whatever the case may be. So it says, uh, welfare is health, prosperity, peace, quiet, tranquility, contentment, friendship, human relationship, peace from war, um, peace as an adjective with God, especially in covenant relationship, um, safety, soundness in body, completeness in number, completeness, soundness, welfare, and peace. So God is saying, in seven, but seek the peace from war. Seek the completeness. Com- seek the covenant with God. Seek the soundness of the city where I've sent you into. And pray to the Lord on his behalf for its peace. For in its peace you will find your peace. For in its health and prosperity you will find your health and prosperity. Um, That's good. I love that. Hallelujah. So whatever city you in. Praying for the welfare of that city, wherever God has sent you on assignment, wherever God has placed you on assignment, you need to be praying for the welfare of that city because in that city, you will find your peace, your prosperity, your completeness, your health for your whole body, your mind, your soundness, your peace from war, your peace as an adjective. Peace means you'll be in a place that's described as peace, your body, your mind, your thoughts, your plans will be in a place of peace. What is the adjective? The adjective describes the thing. So your 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 whatever you're describing, whether that's yourself, um uh, a thing that you're doing will find peace in it. That's good. And he goes on to say, Do not let your prophets and divinities who are among you deceive you. So don't be deceived by everybody that has a word, y'all. Look at the look at their fruit on their tree. Because everybody got a word and they saying they coming to you in God, they ain't. You got to test them. Test that word that they saying. Is it in the Bible? Is it? Does it? When you get done hearing that word, do it confuse you more than it brings you uh, a sense of understanding? And sometimes I'm not gonna say that the word is not confusing, but God hasn't just opened up that revelation. So don't. You just have to be very careful. Anyway, it goes down to ten. So. Um, he says, when 70 years will come, I will visit you and I'll fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. And I want to say that um, I believe that we're in a new time. We're in a new realm. We're in a, we're in a place of new. And so God is, even in Jeremiah 29, because everybody loves to talk about this, this chapter, this scripture, but I don't know how much uh, substance they've brought to you all in this this chapter in scripture because they don't go before and kind of tell you the context but God is telling them after 70 years so let's, some some things going to take time I'm not saying 70 years it's just what is in this Bible but God said after this whatever amount of time that you've been in exile and you've been praying you got to do what God tells you to do in that place and then you got to pray for that place he said I will fulfill to you my promise some of you are God. Are, God is in a place where He's fulfilling some promises to you. So we're gonna we're gonna pray over those promises, okay? And He's gonna visit you. Some of you, God is visiting you in your sleep. He's visiting you. He He's showing you that He's uh, right there beside you in certain situations. Situations you believe like, oh my God, God, that was you. That was you right there, Lord. I cannot but. I mean, I almost can't believe it, but I know I believe it because you're God and you can do anything. And I've been praying and I've been decreeing and declaring. And then he goes on to say, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for peace, plans for per- I'm going, I'm d- defining this word. But plans for peace, plans for prosperity, plans for complete soundness, plans for health in your body, plans for peace in your body, in your life, and not for evil, 
to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and pray to me, and I will hear you. Sometimes, yeah, when we don't, sometimes, here's the thing, in 12 it says, and then when you pray, when, will you call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. Sometimes we ain't getting heard in our prayer because we ain't did what God said. And, and this one, when I say heard, I'm not saying God don't don't have ears to hear you. I'm saying he can't answer your prayer because you ain't did what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be praying over that city that you're in. You're supposed to be praying over the place that you're in. You're supposed to be having an active prayer life over the situations that you're in instead of moaning and groaning and complaining from a negative place about where you at. My God, today, help me. So let's pray. Well, let me go to 13 real quick. He said, you will seek me and find me. See, sometimes we feel like I haven't found God. I can't find God. I don't know where he is. I've been looking. I've been looking for him over there. But today we're going to find God. And he said, when you seek me with all your heart, you can't do it half-heartedly. You can't do it. Look how mom and daddy said it. You can't do it just because pastor. You can't live off pastor seek. You can't live off your mom and daddy seek. Oh, no, we can't do that. So let's pray, everybody. I'm going to start praying um, uh, uh, at 5, verse 5. Father, we thank you. We are, have already asked for we have, out the, we have already asked you for forgiveness. Father, we've already moaned and groaned. We have already had our wordless expression with you, Father. We now have understanding of the scripture, Father, and we thank you for the understanding. Father, as I pray over these people, over this line, over myself, and over whatever you target me to pray in today, Lord Jesus, open up the revelation, the understanding, the wisdom. Give me a word of knowledge. Give me a word of wisdom. Give me a word of understanding that everyone will go today in peace and prosperity and complete soundness, Father, from your word, Lord Jesus. We are talking from the Jeremiah the prophet, Father, who spoke your word, who did what you asked him to do. And so, Father, now, we ask, Father, we, we obey your instruction to build houses and live in them, to plant gardens and eat their produce. Father, we thank you that you have given us ability to build houses and to live in them, to plant gardens and to eat their produce. Father, we thank you that you've given us a, a design with our hands. When we build in houses, God, we're building a safety net. We're building a place, Father, where we can lay our heads, where we can come to you, where we can find uh, complete peace in, Father. Before we can find all of this peace, Father, you want us to build a place where we can enjoy peace, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you that you're teaching us how to plant gardens that, that we can eat from, Father, in the spirit, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you're teaching us how to do these things with our hands and with our minds, Father. We thank you, Father, that we are we are getting married, Father, to those you have called us into assignment with, Lord Jesus. We thank you for kingdom marriages, Father, in our life. And we thank you for our kids having kingdom marriages, Father. And we thank you, God, that in this place of kingdom marriage, we will multiply and we will do what you said do. And you said do not decrease. Father, we will not decrease in reproducing kingdom children and kingdom marriages, Father. Father, we will not decrease, but we will increase. We will not back down from making from making children and from and, and getting into covenant marriages, Father, because you shine your light, you shine your 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 smile, you shine your word on these things, Father, as we obey you. But Father, we seek the welfare of the place that we're in now, Lord Jesus. We pray over the cities that we're in, Lord Jesus. We pray that we find welfare, that our cities find peace, Lord Jesus. Peace from the chaos. Peace from the voting polls. Peace in the classrooms. Peace in the schools, Lord Jesus. Peace in the education systems, Lord. Peace of and prosperity, wealth and wholeness, Lord Jesus. We call up every person that believes in you, Lord Jesus, in all of these places, in our community and county government, Lord, in our state government, Lord. We pray over the welfare of our state, Lord Jesus. We pray over the welfare of our state, Lord. 
Let our state take a stand, Lord. Let us not just want to make history with our voting with our voting privileges, Lord, but let us want to make heaven, Father, with our voting privileges. Let our voting be what you need us to vote for, who you need us to vote for. God, let us not get caught up in black power and white supremacy, Lord Jesus, and, and, and Latino and this and Latino that, Lord, Hispanic this and Hispanic that, Asian this and Asian that, Filipino this and Filipino that, African this and African that, Lord. But let us be kingdom-minded and kingdom-grounded and anchored in the welfare of our city, Lord. Let us pray like you told us to do. Let us pray over our government officials, our aldermen, our councilwomen, our councilmen, our board of directors of schools, Lord Jesus, our superintendents of schools, Lord Jesus. We pray over their minds, Lord, that they will have sound and peace in their voting, in their policy making, in their procedure making. God, we thank you, Father, that you are funding the schools the proper way, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you are protecting the children in proper ways, Lord Jesus. We even pray, Lord Jesus, over the colleges and universities, their board of directors, their people and presidents and vice presidents and vice presidents of different schools, God. We pray over these people, God, that they will make policy and procedure that will favor the believer, Lord Jesus, that will favor and give the believer a peace of, a, a peace of mind and welfare in that city, in that place, Lord Jesus. Continue to open up the revelation, Father, that we are going to be safe, that we are going to be fine because we're doing what the word says. Father, because we pray over these things, because we pray over our churches, Lord, we pray that our churches learn how to collaborate, that we get rid of this division in the churches amongst different denominations and different ways of doctrine. But, Lord, let the doctrine continue to be sound, Father. Let doctrine, uh, the, the heavenly doctrine that you've given us, Father, let us collaborate. Let us come together, Lord Jesus, so that we can get things done, so that we can protect ourselves in, a, in times of famine, in times of war, in times of disease. Chaos, God. Let your believers come together so we can all be fine, be well, be prosperous, be at peace during these chaotic times. We hear about all these different uh, natural disasters, this disaster, social disasters between men and women, women and women, men and men, all of these different laws that's being passed, God. We cry out for mercy over America, Father. Mercy, 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 Lord. Have mercy on America, God. Just like Abraham said, if I can find 10, God, just spare us. If I can find 20, God, spare us. If I can find 30, spare us, Lord. Well, Father, we're asking. We're saying that we are, we are God, we are innocent blood, Father. We, we want to be innocent blood, Lord. Let, let mercy trump judgment when it comes to us on this line that's seeking your face, Lord Jesus. Let not any chaos, disaster, famine, and, and and war and disease come and virus come on our doorstep, on our address, Lord. Let it not come to us, Father, because we're praying now, Father, where we're seeking the welfare of the cities that we're in. We're seeking the welfare of the communities that we're attached to. We're seeking the welfare of the churches that we're connected to. We're seeking the welfare of the families we're connected to. We're seeking the welfare, Lord Jesus, of the communities, of the places, of the cities, of the zip codes, Lord Jesus, that you have called us into at this time, Lord. And because we're seeking the wherefore, Lord, let us find favor in your sight, Lord. When all things are going on around us, Father, let us have peace. Let us have prosperity. Let us have provision. And let us step into your promise. No matter what's going on around us, Father, we accept and we declare that we will step into your promise, Lord Jesus. We are stepping into your promise. Some of us have already Step, Lord Jesus, into the promise. And so, Father, we say yes to your promise. We say yes to your protection. We say yes to your provision. We say yes to your peace. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, give us a discerning ear, Father, that we do not listen to the false prophets who come to say that they're prophesying and teaching and preaching and apostolizing and evangelizing and uh, and pastoring in your name, Lord Jesus. But help us to have a discerning eye. Help us to have a discerning nose. Help us to have discerning ears. Help us to have a discerning mind. Help us to have a discerning heart. Help us to have a discerning hands. Help us to have a, have a discerning footwork, Lord Jesus, that whenever we come across it, whenever we hear it, whenever we look at it, whenever we 
come around it whenever we even see it, Father, that we know that it is a lie because we have discerned it. We have asked for your guidance. We have asked for your revelation, and you have opened it up to us, Lord Jesus. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are not deceived, but we are on the wall. We are watchmen, and we know what we're looking for. We do not listen to the dreams that they say they have just because they said they had it in your name. But we test it, Lord Jesus. And if it, if it sizzles our spirit in a way that makes us unsettled or vexes our spirit in a way that makes us unsettled, Father, help us to take that and, and find more information about it in the name of Jesus. Because you said they are lying, they are prophesying in my name, but you, in your name, but you did not send them. So, God, we thank you for this discernment. We, uh, we have faith that you will help us discern in the name of Jesus. And, Father, you said you will visit us. You will fulfill to us the promise and will bring us back to this place. So, Father, we come into agreement with you visiting us. We come into agreement that you will fulfill to you, to us, the promises that you have made, Lord Jesus. We take hold of your promises now. We declare that we will see your promises. We declare that we will, you will visit us. We declare that you have visited us. We declare under heaven that you have visited us today, Lord Jesus. And, God, we know that you have plans for us, plans to help us succeed, plans to help us prosper, plans to help us be complete, plans to help us be found, help, plans to help us have a health and peace in our mind and our bodies, Lord Jesus. So we take hold of that promise, Lord Jesus, and we declare that we will be prosperous and you and your plans over our life will be prosperous. The provision and the promise and the protection will be prosperous and we will see it and we will know it and we will confirm it and we will declare and we will walk in it and we will obey you in it and we will give you the glory in it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And you even said when we call on your name, when we pray to you, you will hear us. So, Father, hear us. We're calling on your name. We've already called on your name. We've already made way for you in this, Lord Jesus. So hear us, Lord Jesus. Hear us, Lord Jesus. Hear us, Lord Jesus. When we have, we have done what you have signed us to do, we have followed the instruction, Lord. Hear us. Hear us. Hear us. You said we will seek you and find you. Father, we have sought you. We are seeking you, and we will continue to seek you. And that means we have found you. We are finding you. We have found you. We are finding you, and we will continue to find you, Father. You said seek, uh, seek you with all our heart. So, Father, we put our heart on the line. We ain't putting our heart on the line for man or woman, for job, career, for things that are materials or things that we think that we want during this time, but, Lord, we just put our heart all out there for you. And you said that we will be found, you will be found by us. Declare, you made that a declaration. You announced that you will, you, we, you will be found by us. And you said you will restore our fortunes. Father, we ask you now to restore the generational blessings, to restore the generational fortunes, over our life now, Lord Jesus. Restore those generational fortunes. Everybody always talking about generational curses, Lord, but we know there are generational fortunes and blessings that are attached to our bloodline that have been held up because things have been, that have been negative and demonic have ran through the bloodline. But, God, we have already called those counsel because we're walking in your promises. We are following your instructions. So, Father, release. And restore the fortunes and the blessings of our generations, of our bloodline, Lord Jesus. We accept these fortunes right now, Lord Jesus. We accept the restoration of these fortunes in our bloodline. We call them to us now. We call them to our children. We call them to our children's children. We call restoration to our children's children. And our children, 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 we call restoration of our fortune and our generation blessings all the way, God, for a hundred generations after us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, that the prayers now that we pray, a restoration of, of promises will be fulfilled and is fulfilled under heaven. You said, Lord Jesus, that you will gather us from all the nations where you have driven us. 
and you made that a declaration, and you said you will bring us back to the place from which you sent us out into exile. So, Father, whatever place you have sent us where we have felt exile uncovered um, or, or just uncovered and um, um, not seen or too seen, too open, Lord, we just thank you now that you are calling us back, Father, and that you have restored us. We thank you, we worship you, and we praise you, Father, for these things that you have declared, Lord Jesus. We come into a covenant agreement with your word, with your scripture, Lord. And, Lord, we ask you now, Lord, that during this day, during this week, you show us, God, your glory. We, you show us your answers. You show us your instruction. We accept your instruction. And by faith, God, by faith, God, by faith, God, we step into all these things on this morning. We step into them. We put the garments of restoration on our back. We put the garments of fulfillment in our head. We put the garments of fulfillment on our feet. We put the garments of fulfillment on our hands. We put the garments of promises that you've made in Jeremiah 29 on our lives, Lord Jesus. We put it on just like we put on clothes in the morning. God, we refreshing ourselves with your promises. We refreshing ourselves, God, with your fresh oil on today. So, God, give us understanding. Give us understanding on your word. Give us understanding on these prayers, God. And let not your power cease. And let not your power cease in our lives, Lord. Let not your power cease in our lives. But stand, we stand fast, Father, and we will see these generational blessings. We will see these generational blessings. What they did years and years ago, even in this book, in this chapter, in this scripture, Lord, that we are a part of, if these are any of the ancestors that you were talking to us, to them, about us, and we're part of their generation, we're part of their lineage, Lord, let those blessings fall on us now, Lord Jesus. We decree and declare the blessings of that gen- of our generations will fall on us now. We receive it in faith. We believe it. We receive it, and we drive out unbelief. We drive out unbelief. We drive out unbelief. And we thank you, Father, for all of these things. We praise you. We love you. And we do, when we see it, we aim and we seek to give you the glory whenever it is in our hands, whenever it is in our possession, however it is in our possession. We give you the glory when they ask us, How, who, what, why, when, where, we will say it is God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, you all, I'm going to give us a moment of, of, a few moments of silence. But I just ask that you just continue to work this word. I'm going to take y'all off mute. Um, um, I hope this prayer this this was a blessing to you and you guys we have to be strategic in prayer. A lot of times we go to God and all these emotions and I'm not saying that's wrong, but we have to be strategic, tactical, uh and and we have to be strapped up with the word. Our prayers need to be strapped up with the word, our declarations need to be strapped up with the word. Because that's what heaven responds to. That's what the angels respond to. Demons and devils and witches and warlocks and wizards and witch doctors and all these things, they respond to that. They hate when we use the word. So we have to use the word. We have to use the word. We must use the word. That is the sword of the spirit. That is the only weapon that we have that is a, uh, what's the word, offensive type of weapon. Every other weapon or tool that we have is for protection and shielding um, and to hold us upright. Um, And so the only weapon that we have and that we need (laughs) is the word of God. We speak a thing that is a principle, and we use the shield of faith. But when the enemy comes against us like a flood in our mind, we we use faith to rebuke them. We we use faith to counsel them, captivate those thoughts, uh, take captive those take captive those thoughts, not captivate, take captive those thoughts and make them obedient to Jesus Christ. And so we have to 
move from such emotional prayers and, you know, and uh, to self, self-righteous self prayers and move into strategic, tactical prayer and living because that's the time we in. You can't allow people to just be so, so emotional. I'm not saying emotions are bad, that you don't have them, you shouldn't call to God in them and all that because I'm going to go to God with all my emotions, baby. But when it's time to pray and get on the enemy territory and take some back or declare some of my life, we want to be strategic and tactical because the mm-hmm. devil is waiting at our step. As soon as we step out that door, mm-hmm. woo, he waiting. And so we got to drive him out. We got to drive him away from our door step before uh, we even step outside. And so I pray that God continues to open up the revelation for us, the understanding, the wisdom as we go about our day. I'm going to end the recording, um, and then we're going to have a few minutes of silence. But this is the Vibe Drop Try Prayer Call. If you don't know I created Jesus, all you have to do is say, God, forgive me for my sins. I want to be new. I accept that you died on the cross and you were resurrected. You came to earth. You died on the cross for my sins, and you were resurrected, and you still live. And you want, and I want to be part of that. I want to be a part of that citizenship. I want to be a part of that kingdom. I want to be a part of that blessing. I want to be a part of that salvation. And that's how you accept the Father. And so we will see you Friday at 5 a.m. God bless you. God bless you.